All right, tis the season. And with that, we have seen obviously some pretty interesting price action. You may start to have family members and friends, maybe not yet, but you may start to have some of them asking you questions. Hey, what about that Bitcoin thing that you're so into? And so to celebrate the holidays, I want to do a video today on how to orange pill your friends and family members. I wanna share what I have found to work well and less well, having orange pilled a lot of folks in my life, uh, both you know in real life as well as uh, various strangers on the interwebs. And this is important, right? I think everyone is going to feel slightly differently about this, but I know that I personally, knowing what I know, feel in a real moral obligation to help those that I care about and love understand this thing. And even if they don't get all the way up the learning curve, I still want them to have at least a foot in the life raft that is Bitcoin. And so without further ado, let's jump in. Okay, so to start, I wanna share three just overarching guiding principles. One is empathize with people, empathize that they don't know what you know, they haven't spent the time studying what you've studied. And furthermore, empathize that the single most common reason someone is going to stumble their way into Bitcoin, at least initially, is speculation. And that is certainly true for me personally, right? Even as someone who was, you know, deep in Austrian economics, libertarianism, skeptical of authority since I was a kid, right? Despite all of that, it was indeed speculation that brought me in to Bitcoin. And at the time, the broader sort of crypto realm, and we'll get into another key principle uh, on that in just a moment, but empathize with that, almost lean into it. You know, you don't wanna be misleading. You don't wanna tell someone, oh, hey, you know, price is gonna rip, you gotta get in now. But if they're clearly first and foremost interested in, whoa, like Bitcoin, the price is up 100%, whatever it is, don't immediately divert it and say, well, yeah, but actually it's sovereign money, blah, blah, blah. Like lean into that a little bit and say, yeah, I mean, personally, my purchasing power has gone up when everyone else's is going down. And I feel pretty good about that. The second key principle is that this is most likely, again, I'm speaking from personal experience across the different people I've interacted with, is that this is an iterative approach. Very, very few people are going to sit down and watch the 94 hours of you know Michael Saylor and Robert Breedlove before making a single decision, right? What is far more likely to happen is that if you can give them an easy way to get started, just get a little bit of skin in the game, that is now the real impactful impetus and catalyst for them to want to learn more. And the more that they learn, the more that they accumulate, the more that they accumulate, the more they wanna learn. And it's this virtuous cycle. So you need to kick this virtuous cycle off instead of overloading them with all this sort of library of knowledge right off the bat. That is critical. And then the third overarching principle is that the lessons we retain the most are the ones that involve a little bit of pain. Now, I'm not saying go and encourage your friend and family members to go and be degenerate gamblers on a bunch of altcoins, but I do think it can be off-putting if you're doing it in the wrong way, right? So I might say something like, hey, look, how I personally think about it is, you know, Bitcoin, it's long-term savings, it's generational wealth, it's all these things. You're a free adult, you're free to do whatever the heck you want, but just be advised of these other tokens are gonna look much more like gambling, which if that's your thing, like by all means, so, right? So there's a difference between that and sort of saying, oh no, you know, you're, you're, this, you're this absolute scum of the earth if you dare do any of that stuff, right? Because they're gonna do it anyway. They're gonna do it anyway, even if you're on you know, your preacher sermon over here. And so by being a little more realistic with that, hopefully you are limiting what they do there. And then when inevitably, and it is a question of when and not if, they burn their hand on the stove and either get rugged or whatever it is, hopefully that damage is very contained and you've already planted the seeds for them, as we will discuss later on, for why Bitcoin is special. It is unique relative to any other crypto asset that exists 
and that ever will exist. So those are the three overarching principles. Now let's get into the process. As I said in principle number two, the key is to do this in an iterative fashion. And so what I'm commonly doing is, you know, maybe around the dinner table over a holiday. I used to do this. I used to like hard press people and be like, you got to get in this. And, you know, I end up sounding like a crazy person. And so what is much more the case now is, you know, hey, how's it going? How's it going? Right. I now work in Bitcoin so I can talk about my job and how that's going. And so in Bitcoin inevitably comes up in the way that I talk about how I'm doing. And so that often provides a nice jumping off point. Then someone might say, oh, yeah, like prices. Yeah. Hasn't Bitcoin doubled over the last year? It's like, yeah, actually it has. And then they'll say, oh, man, yeah, you know, it is. It's interesting. Like I just, you know, I don't know how to get started. Boom. Okay. There's your entry. And so let's talk about some of my favorite tools for getting someone onboarded right off the bat. Okay. So again, remembering the iterative approach principle, if you think you can swing it by all means, get this individual on something like BISC. Guess what? You're going to have to seed them with some initial Bitcoin for them to pay the escrow fee to even do anything on BISC. But like, if you can enable them to do this non KYC, incredible, amazing, by all means, bonus points for you, well done. But I personally have found for the vast majority of people that comes later, right? That doesn't mean you don't mention this, but how I'll often do it is I'll focus on something that's just easier to start that doesn't scare them off. But as we're doing it, I'll sort of say, and oh, by the way, like there are other ways that you can acquire Bitcoin that have really attractive privacy traits as well, if that's something you care about. And then they say, oh, you know, that is something I care about. Like, where can I learn more? Boom. Then you have that opening. But again, iterative approach. And so my favorite methods are a fewfold. One is something called light sats. I have done a whole video just about a year ago on this. It is an absolutely excellent tool that allows you to essentially gift or tip someone Bitcoin. How this works is you get set up on light sats and then you can basically fund a tip. And then you can share that tip to someone as just a normal URL. So you could text it to someone, whatever, and they can access that. And then they are guided through a process to learn a you know tiny bit about Bitcoin. They'll get some nice little couple flip cards. Then they will have a recommended wallet for them to download. And then finally, they will be guided on how to withdraw their sats. Uh, this is all over the Lightning Network as well. So this can work with small, small amounts. I will say some of the recommended wallets that they're going to put at the top, rightly so, are some of the non-custodial options such as Breeze, Phoenix, etc. And I will say in this high fee environment, it is not foolproof. Keep in mind that when you're having someone get onboarded to the Lightning Network with a non-custodial wallet, what's happening when they receive that first payment, so when they withdraw their sats from LightSats, is a channel is being opened with them. Again, I've done videos on all of these uh, tools and wallets. And so just make sure that the sat amount is fairly large in order to cover that initial channel opening fee. So just a bit of a caveat there, but I really, really like LightSats. It is a terrific onboarding flow for someone and you can even kind of track their progress as they're making it through the process. You can see, oh, you know, maybe they got hung up on the wallet downloading step, et cetera. But really, really good way to onboard and gift someone some sats. Again, check out that video where I've done a full walkthrough of how that all works. The second method I wanna highlight, and this is a little bit US centric, given that this is a US based exchange, uh, but you can use what is now called River Link. This is pretty cool. River Financial is a Bitcoin only exchange. They offer lightning services. They offer a great exchange option. And so if you do already have an account with River, you can send and gift sats using River Link. Be sure you're subscribed because I am going to do a tutorial on River very, very shortly because the reality is that it is helpful for newbies to have a trusted exchange where at least they can get started. Do not dare allow them to leave their sats on the exchange. Always coach them on taking self-custody and the importance of that. But net net, something like River, I think is a great option. And now that they have this River link, that is a really powerful way for you to easily share 
and onboard uh, someone to Bitcoin. If you happen to be somewhere like Canada, you could use bull Bitcoin, which is just on a whole different level when it comes to de facto making these Bitcoin buys, you know, you're, you're automatically taking self custody. So there's some pretty cool stuff there. There's also stuff like Swan Bitcoin that you could get them set up on. And then a final interesting option is the Sats card from CoinKite, the makers of Cold Card. I've done a whole video on Open Dimes, which are also very fun devices. But the form factor, this kind of thumb drive looking thing can be a little bit intimidating. And so something that's a little bit friendlier, I would say, and accessible is their SATS card, which is like an open dime in that it is a physical bearer instrument, right? Like you can load up Bitcoin on this thing and then pass it around as if it were a physical $20 bill or whatever in your pocket. It has NFC capabilities and it's in this nice familiar card form factor. I will say it does still require some steps to access the Bitcoin it's embedded within the card, but that's another really cool way that you can do this. And is also unique in that you have this like physical thing that you're presenting to someone. Last thing I'll say on that topic, I personally believe it is more important for someone to get sats and take self custody than to not do it at all. And it is simply the case that for a lot of people, some of these centralized methods are the only way that you're going to get them to do it. You can level them up over time to things like BISC, to things like RoboSats. There are great tools out there, Azteco vouchers. There's so many ways that you can get non-KYC Bitcoin. And my whole playlist, how to acquire Bitcoin, is primarily dominated by non-KYC methods. So don't get me wrong, but again, you wanna think about this iterative approach. You are simply not going to be successful. And I would argue it is vastly more important to get your loved one on the life raft, after which there are always privacy techniques such as Samurai Wallet, Whirlpool, that you, know, you can eventually get them to if that's something they care about. Obviously, you'll never undo the past. You will never erase the fact that that loved one or friend you know, purchased X amount of Bitcoin on Coinbase but there are techniques where you can provide plausible deniability to the fact that you still retain them. So that's all I'll say on that topic. All right, and then now that they're on board, now that they have that little bit of skin in the game, they're gonna be a lot more motivated to learn more. Doesn't mean you can't share resources with them before all of this happens, but I'm just telling you, most people are gonna get overwhelmed if you start sharing out all these different links. And what's great now in the year 2023, soon to be 2024, is that there is so much good information out there. And so you wanna meet them where they are, right? Are they super interested in kind of broader financial markets and investing and macro economy? If so, people like Lynn Alden and Luke Grauman are fantastic resources for you to share with them. Lynn just came out with her book. I have yet to read it, but it has gotten just absolutely unbelievable reviews. If they have more of an engineer's mindset or systems level thinking, people like Michael Saylor and Jeff Booth are incredible resources to do as well. Jeff had his book, uh, Price of Tomorrow, which is an absolutely phenomenal book that I think a lot of people will be able to understand, you know, if they're more philosophical or maybe more into economics, uh, people like Robert Breedlove do some really great deep dive conversations with a whole range of hosts and guests. You know, if they're more technical, maybe computer science, you have OGs like Andreas Antonopoulos that have put out some absolutely fantastic work where he boils some of the technical concepts of Bitcoin and the underlying cryptography down for really a, a wide audience to be able to understand. So the information's out there. Those are a couple of my favorites I've just rattled off. And the other sort of thing, and maybe this goes up with the three principles as well, is what I have found is the degree of conviction, the degree of someone's conviction, is the summation of the degree to which they perceive and understand the problem, plus the degree to which they see Bitcoin as the, or if not, at least a very important solution to that problem. And so for helping people understand the former, one of my favorite resources to point people to is WTFHappenedIn1971.com. A lot of you watching are probably familiar with that, uh, but do not underestimate the visual power of graphs. They are so impactful. And I have taken people from absolute zero to holy smokes, there's something wrong. Like, let me, like, tell me more about this thing that you're asserting is a solution to this. 
just with this one resource. So WTF happened in 1971.com is a great one. And then as their interest is really peaked, I've done my best to create a beginner's playlist that goes from step one, what is money, what is Bitcoin, why is Bitcoin special and unique in relation to any other crypto asset, how can they get started, what's the importance of self-custody and what are some of the recommendations there. And again, I've got all the tutorials people can go and then and then go through so they can build up their knowledge as well. And then I finalize that playlist with some of the other topics, maybe more advanced topics, to give people a roadmap of where they can continue to learn and explore. So admittedly a self show, but I've had a lot of people tell me how much they love the intro beginners, uh, Bitcoin beginners playlist that I have on my channel. I'm adding this one in editing, but I would be remiss to not mention Wiser, which is like the Duolingo app of Bitcoin. High, high quality education resources. I've done a whole video. Uh, the team is great. So that's a great one as well, both for learning resources and they can earn you know a few sats just by learning about Bitcoin. And then lastly, inevitably, there will be some uh, FUD, fear, uncertainty, doubt type concerns that come up. Oh, you know, I thought Bitcoin was bad for the environment or Oh, I thought, you know, JP Morgan said it was a Ponzi or, you know, all these different things. And again, let's be honest, like you probably asked or at least thought some of those same concerns before you got into Bitcoin. I know I certainly did. And so have some resources to help combat that as well. Some of my favorites, one is uh, James Lopp's Bitcoin resources, which just touches on absolutely every facet you could possibly imagine. And then secondly, and this has been a project underway recently, is whybitcoinonly.com. And I think they're still putting some final touches on the site, but you could go to whybitcoinonly.com and there's this uh, outline, this sort of table of contents. And the fourth chapter, the fourth section is clearing up Bitcoin FUD. And you can see here, right? Like Bitcoin's bad for the environment. Bitcoin has no intrinsic value. It's not backed by anything. It's a speculative bubble. It's a pyramid scheme. It's a Ponzi scheme. It has no utility. It's criminal money. It's MySpace or something else that's going to overtake it. It's too expensive. I'm too late, right? Like look at all of this. And so just put, put this in front of someone who's starting to ask these questions and they'll be like, holy smokes, like this is bringing up even stuff that I haven't thought about yet. And so it's a great resource to demonstrate that like you probably have not thought of some novel a potential issue. And so you kind of want people to get there on their own. Like they're going to have to take this journey and you're really just trying to lay the path out for them to do it. But there you have it. We're going to leave this video here. Curious to hear what are your thoughts? What have you found to work well, not work well when orange pilling those you love? Have you just stopped doing it all together until people inevitably stop, start asking you again as we kick off this new bull run? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, but I hope you found this valuable and insightful. If you did, you already know what to do. Give this a like. Use the share feature underneath this video that really does help get this to a wider audience, which I think is super important because Bitcoin was always destined to be a bottoms up movement and each of you watching this and learning about bitcoin on your journey each of you is a node as it were on the network that is capable of sharing and passing the torch of knowledge and information to those you care about that is the only way we're going to win this great battle against the tyrants that seek to rob you of your precious time and life force and if you were so enamored with this content and you want to donate to a pleb which really does help me continue to make these videos. You can do so in a number of ways. There's the super thanks feature built directly into YouTube. If you happen to be using something like the Get Albi browser extension, you can just click that. It'll automatically detect you're watching my channel, which is pretty cool. Or alternatively, you can send some sats over the Lightning Network to my Lightning address, me at www.enmajor.xyz or ragermajor at getalbi.com. I'll also try and put up the QR code uh, that you can simply scan if that is easier. And for those of you that have asked how you can get in touch with me for one-on-one -on -one consulting, advising, mentoring, maybe you're starting a Bitcoin business, you're trying to set up a you know, multi-sig for your family, you're trying to run a node, you're trying to accept Bitcoin payments, whatever it is, reach out to me on Vida and we can connect. But for now, we'll go ahead and leave things here. As a reminder, every sack counts. And until next time, my friends, I'll see you then.